Dimopoulos and it is my pleasure to present on behalf of my co-authors the data of a phase 3 randomized study of daratumumab monotherapy versus active monitoring in patients with high risk smoldering multiple myeloma, the primary results of the Aquila study. Smoldering myeloma is an asymptomatic plasma cell disorder and a subset of patients are at high risk of end organ damage and progression to myeloma. The standard approach today for patients with high risk myeloma is observation. However, we would like uh, to develop ways to avoid uh, end organ damage, skeletal related events and renal failure, especially in patients who are at high risk for progression. Daratumumab monotherapy has a single agent activity in patients with symptomatic myeloma and also in a phase two study in patients with intermediate risk and high risk smoldering myeloma. Based on this data, uh, the Aquila study was designed uh, which uh, randomized patients with high risk smoldering myeloma to uh, either daratumumab subcutaneously or uh, observation. This is the design of the study. Patients who fulfill the, the eligibility criteria, uh, which are seen uh, here, were randomized to receive either daratumumab as monotherapy at a standard dose for a total period of three years or active monitoring. The primary endpoint was uh, progression uh, by an independent uh, review committee according to the SLIM or CRAB criteria. Secondary endpoints uh, included progression-free survival too and overall survival. It is important to note that patients were staged uh, very accurately uh, with uh, modern imaging techniques such as uh, whole body CT, PET CT, MRI. These uh, tests were repeated yearly uh, thereafter. Uh, also patients uh, underwent uh, every two weeks uh, laboratory tests uh, and uh, they underwent uh, at baseline a bone marrow biopsy, which was repeated again at least uh, every two years. These are the CRAB and the SLIM criteria that were used to assess progression to symptomatic myeloma in our study. The baseline demographic and disease characteristics uh, data shown in this table indicate that uh, these were well balanced between the two groups. Treatment uh, or active monitoring disposition indicated that there was a low rate of daratumumab discontinuation due to adverse events, uh, suggesting that daratumumab was well tolerated. Patient retention on the study was excellent with most patients in ongoing follow-up. Deaths leading to study discontinuation were nearly double in active monitoring. This is the primary endpoint of the study, and uh, these uh, Kaplan-Meier curves indicate that daratumumab significantly reduced the risk of progression to multiple myeloma or death by 51% versus active monitoring. And it is important to mention that uh, the benefit continued beyond the three-year period that the patients were receiving treatment. For example, at uh, five years, 63% of patients on daratumumab had not progressed versus 40% of patients uh, uh, on uh, active monitoring. As far as pattern of progression, the majority of the patients progressed with CRAB or SLIM criteria, but symptomatic bone disease was seen in a minority of the patients, and this uh, was due to the very strict uh, follow-up uh, of patients both in the treatment and in the control arm. The benefit was seen across uh, all patient subsets and uh, uh, if one uh, uh, breaks down the uh, patients according to the May 2018 risk criteria, there was a benefit even in lower intermediate risk group. 
However, the greatest benefit was in high-risk group, and this is depicted in the Kaplan-Meier curve, where the hazard ratio is 0.36, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the median time to progression to progressive disease in the active monitoring was 22 months, and it was not reached in the daratumumab arm. Daratumumab induced responses in more than 60% of the patients, including about one-third of patients who achieved uh, a, a very good partial response or better. Time to first-line treatment for myeloma was much longer uh, in uh, patients randomized uh, to receiving daratumumab, uh, and the hazard ratio was 0.46. Furthermore, Daratumab improved progression-free survival on first-line treatment for myeloma versus active monitoring, uh, and uh, it, treatment with daratumab did not impair later treatment for multiple myeloma. It was of interest to see that despite a short follow-up, there was an overall survival advantage in favor of daratumumab, uh, and uh, as you can see here, uh, this was associated with uh, uh, a, a lower death rate due to disease progression in the daratumumab arm. Quality of life uh, was not was maintained during treatment with daratumumab. The safety overview data show that low rate of daratumumab discontinuation due to treatment adverse events were documented in this study. For adverse event of special interest, cytopenias were seen in a minority of patients treated with daratumumab, and grade 3 or 4 infections were slightly higher in patients treated with daratumumab versus observation. The rate of second primary malignancies was the same between the two treatment arms. We conclude that uh, the Aquila study is a large phase 3 study in a well-defined population with high-risk smoldering myeloma. Uh, and in this study, daratumumab was given for three years and it demonstrated a, significantly, a statistically significant progression-free survival benefit versus active monitoring with a hazard ratio of 0.49. The greatest PFS benefit with daratumumab was observed among patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma according to the Mayo 2020, 2018 criteria. Daratumumab prolonged progression-free survival on first-line treatment for bulk myeloma. It demonstrated a favorable safety profile with a low rate of treatment discontinuation due to adverse events, and also Daratumumab extended the overall survival of the patients. All this data indicate that early intervention with daratumumab in patients with high-risk smoldering myeloma represent a very good opportunity to delay or avoid end-organ damage and progression to myeloma and to extend the overall survival of the patients. Thank you.